Good day. Here we are once again with another segment of Cooking Tips with g -Rod, presented by The Gathering again. Um, as we talked about last week, we talked about a slurry and, 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 and a row. And what I touched on briefly was was the best amount of sauce, which is a white sauce. Um, which is very quickly. Here, once again, I made, once again, I made a roux, as everyone can say. I'm just gonna add, just add a little milk to it, which I'm only doing a very small batch of this because I have no need for it. And you would obviously not do this in a skillet, but you would do it in a, in a, in a, in a saucepan, something like this. So you would just mix it with a whisk, because a whisk introduces air into the into the item, which once again makes it thicker. If you if you would do this at home, it would take a while because milk milk is not as thick as if you did it with heavy cream, it would thicken up within uh, 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 within probably 30 seconds. As you can see here, yeah, it thickened right up on me because I didn't put a whole lot in. If I put more milk in, I, I, more milk in, I would increase the sauce, which I have here. Brew acts as the binding agent to the milk. It binds the proteins of the milk, and you have a quick, a quick bechamel sauce. You can you can start this off by sautéing some garlic in it, introducing the roux, then introducing the milk, and you have a garlic white sauce. Or at this stage of the game, you could drop some white wine into it, reduce the white wine, and then you have the sauce. From here on in. You would just add chicken broth to this, and you would have a white chicken broth sauce. But that is your basic bechamel sauce, white sauce. It's just a roux, and you add in milk, and you stir it with a whisk to thicken it up. It would take about three to five minutes, barring how much milk you put into it. But that is your basic, your, that is your basic white sauce. Now what we're doing here is. You can see I have water coming to a boil. What I wanted to do was talk about talk about cooking methods, but we didn't have time for it because it was something I wanted to get to on Memorial Day, and this was one of them. It's called blanching. You would take a, a, an item, any kind of fruit or a tomato, you would drop it in for 30 seconds to 40 seconds and put it into an ice bath as I have here. Water and, 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 and ice cubes. You, you, you would take it, just drop it in. I'm, do, I'm doing a, 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 like a tomato. If you did it with vegetables, like broccoli, carrots, it's what you would see in like when you buy a, um, a vegetable platter from Whole Foods or from DJs, you know how the the uh, tomatoes and the broccoli is that bright green, that bright that bright orange color. This is what they get. They blanch it, drop it into the ice bath. The blanching kills the enzymes and the bacteria in the food, so it can hold. It has a longer shelf life. Something like a tomato fruit. We're doing this. We're doing this to easily peel the skin off of the tomato. So all we're going to do is drop it into the boiling water for about 30 seconds. I'm using time to use a slotted spoon to, 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 to take it out. There's one thing that you would want to do before this. Take the bottom of the tomato, put an X in it. This gets the water inside of the, of, of the tomato to loosen the skin up for you.
But as I said, this would this this kills all the bacteria in, in the food. So so if you make a a, a vegetable a vegetable platter like the celery, carrots, broccoli, it can hold it, 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 it can hold for a few days in your refrigerator. Then take it out of the boiling water into an ice bath, which this is called shocking. What this is doing is stopping the cooking process. It's basically what, it, it's basically what you want. If you if you were doing uh, broccoli is a great example. If you did it too long, broccoli goes from bright green to dark green. The, like the chlorophyll in, 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 in broccoli, which would turns on it turns a darker green, the longer you cook it. So that's one thing you don't want to do. Once you see the broccoli get that bright green, it's time to get it out of the water into the ice bath. The ice bath stops the cooking process. And then you can just take it out of the ice bath, and as you can see, it peels right off. You start with the X's and you can and the skin of the tomato peels right off. And now you have a tomato with no skin on it. Now, this is why I wanted to get to this, get to showing you blanching and showing you how to get the skin off of a tomato. This is the challenge the Gagarin has come up with. The challenge here is, we know everyone in Garrison Beach and whoever else is watching this, uh, grows their own tomatoes in the yard throughout the summer. Now, to, once you get tomato plants, you accumulate a lot of tomatoes by July and August. Is what we want you to do is, we want, we want, we want to try to get people together to come up with a homemade marinara sauce from the tomatoes that you grow in your yard. And sometime in August, which we will keep you posted on, we'll, we'll post it on, on on our Facebook page. We want to have a cook-off with the best marinara, with everyone bringing in their homemade marinara sauce from the tomatoes that they have grown in their yard. Which blends them, peeling the tomatoes. Now there's numerous ways you can, some people prefer to just to cut the tomato and use it like this. And use it with the seeds in it. Some like to put it through a sifter and get the seeds and the extra liquid out. That's your preference. Me personally, I would just cut the tomato and and use this tomato and have the seeds and a little bit of a chunkier tomato sauce. Others might grind it down to more of a, of a paste and have have what you would see in a crushed tomato can. That is your preference. So, as I said, sometime in August we want to have we want to crown a champion of the best marinara sauce in, in Garrison Beach with using tomatoes that you have grown in your yard. So, from here on out, we would like to have CP post some pictures on the Gathering Facebook page of your tomatoes grown in your yard. The tomatoes that you have picked, the tomatoes that you might use to keep everyone posted. And as I said throughout the summer, we will constantly remind people of this challenge. It will come sometime, probably the second or third week in August, okay? And Thank you once again for watching, and I'd like to thank the, uh, the, the, uh, like the men and women, past and present, who, who, who serve our military forces. Th thank you very much for protecting our freedom and, and, our, and our way of life on, on, on this Memorial Day weekend. And tomorrow, I will be dropping a video of, which I, everyone's probably waiting on, grilling tips, okay? Because it's the big weekend for barbecuing, so I'll have a video out there of growing tips. Thank you very much and enjoy your day and enjoy your Memorial Day weekend and, 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 and remember always thank our uh, always thank our, uh, 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 our armed forces for, for, for what they have do for what they have done for us. Thank you very much.